Whenever people in this hobby discuss their favorite tactile switch, there's always that one guy on Reddit who only uses Tote Prey. It's like them people who think like an Ava makes them edgy. So today, we'll put the tactile supremacy to the test, not just with our ears, but with our eyes. Tote Prey switches, named after their original designer and manufacturer, are an electrostatic, capacitive, non-contact switch that comes straight out of Japan. Cool, that's a bit of a tongue twister, isn't it? <laughs> What this means in real person talk is the keystrokes are registered through an electric current as opposed to the flick of a switch. This results in a far smoother typing feel as the switches will reset to their resting position far more smoothly than other key switches. Tote Prey switches, as opposed to MX switches, consist of a slider, inner housing, over a rubber dome which sits on top of a conical coiled spring. As opposed to Cherry MX and all the other MX clone switches out there, Tote Prey switches exist in sheets which are placed on top of the PCB. The functionality of Tote Prey switches relies very heavily on two things. The rubber dome which sits on top of the conical coiled spring and the spring which makes direct contact with the PCB. But I know what you're thinking, I don't give a sheet about their <laughs> about their design features. How do they feel? Tote Prey tactility isn't achieved in the same way as that of MX switches. It relies on a rubber dome for tactility, so obviously it will feel different from a mechanical switch. But this is also why you feel the tactile event at the top of the key press, because the rubber dome is collapsing as the key is pressed. This early tactile event has tried to be mimicked by a number of different Franken switches, such as the Holy Panda and all the Holy Panda variants that have followed. Topro graphs are really interesting, or at least I think they are, because they give you this visual understanding of how the switch will actually feel in comparison to MX switches. From this graph of a Topro 45 gram real force, we can see that the switch actuates a one millimeter with a sharp increase in force. As opposed to popular MX tactile switches, this tactile event isn't so much as an isolated bump as much as it's a smooth, consistent travel until bottom out. The same can be seen from the orange curve when the switch is returning back to its resting position. Now if we compare this to something like the Duroc Koalas, you can really see the difference between the downstroke and the upstroke in the switch with every key press. You can also see that characteristic tactile event which you see with every single tactile switch. Maybe one reason Topre hasn't flooded the enthusiast scene, but more so remained hidden with a cult-like following, is the lack of customization that exists in comparison to MX style customs. As I've already discussed, changing into the in the the As I've already discussed, changing individual switches isn't really an option, nor is plate mounting styles, all that different keyboard stuff. But there are companies who have created custom cases for existing Topre boards. Norbauer & Co have produced insane custom keyboard kits for existing boards like the HHKBs, Leopold FC980s, and Norbaforce Mark IIs, but these come with their own high-end price tag. Now, I'm not a Topre Pro, and this is a whole different rabbit hole if you want to get into it. Places like Desthority will give you a far greater rundown of what to expect and how to understand customizing these boards, but hopefully this has given you an insight into their inner workings if you didn't have any already. So now I've bored... <laughs> So now I've bored you with the entire historical background of this springy boy, it might be worth having a listen and doing a little comparison. So to do this, I've got one of the hottest Tote Prey boards on the market. This is the HHKB Pro Classic. As you'd expect from the name, it's got the HHKB layout. This gives you a minimalist, 10 keyless, near symmetrical layout. It comes with premium PBT keycaps and overall gives off this really nice vintage aesthetic. If you're looking to pick up one of these boards for yourselves, the board even lets you change keyboard mode to support different operating functions, whether you're on Windows or Mac. The Tote Prey switches and the HHKBs have a 45 gram force and a four millimeter travel. Hell, all these people banging on about thuck this, thuck that, Tote Prey was the original thuck. So let's do a sound test.
In my opinion, Topre boards have this really bassy, muted sound that really resonates in whichever housing the board is in. This isn't necessarily a bad thing, this is a hobby of preference, but people tend to gravitate towards Topre for the feel rather than the sound. After using this for a month, I can really start to see why. However, as someone who really likes a clacky board, I don't think the sound of Topre is something that I could get behind 100% of the time. But that's the benefit of this being such a subjective hobby, eh? Now, thanks for watching. If you liked this video, make sure to subscribe and leave a like down below. And let me know what you think of Topre boards in the comments. See you, nerds.